on parched Kimberley Plains by weathered track or spring. Along the bitumen rivers, there is a tree that's king, His Majesty the Boab. But why are they here? And where did they come from? Even the sharpest mind of a travelling bush mechanic from the desert is stumped. For most visitors to the Kimberley, the Boab tree stands out like an African in an igloo. They sit like ancient prehistoric monoliths amidst a landscape reminiscent of another planet. Their huge bulging trunks, spidery branches and large nuts set them apart from anything else growing in Australia. Tim Willing is a conservation officer and a Boab nut. He's been sprouting theories about their origins for years. It's a real anomaly, I think, in the Australian flora. Too. They only occur in the Kimberley and Victoria River area of the Northern Territory, so they're only up in that one corner of Australia. The, the species Adansonia gregora is uh, quite distinct, has a lot of features which are different uh, morphologically to all the other species. There's no question that boabs are native to Australia and have been here a long time. No question at all. But the origins of Australia's only boab species remains a mystery. How did they come to be here at all? When every other member of the boab family is found thousands of kilometres away in Africa. There have been um, a few theories. One is that they were around in the Gondwana times when the continents were all joined and the, the plants went off on the rafts, if you like, to became part of new continents. But um, that theory doesn't really add up because the geological dates don't fit with the rise of plant species. But um, it seems much more likely that long distance dispersal across the Indian Ocean by um, probably the ancestral bird would have floated to Australia from most likely Madagascar or possibly islands that are now sunk in the Indian Ocean in between Madagascar and Australia. We don't have any um, good data on when Boabs originally arrived in the Kimberley. We have some which are at least 500, probably to 1,000 years old. This um, one, which is by no means uh, one of the bigger ones in the Kimberley, be probably 100 years old minimum. And, uh, Trees in Africa have been uh, radiocarbon dated to several thousand years old. Um, the seeds are like small shaped kidneys and uh, their pulp is quite acid to the taste. They're all, all the species that have edible. Uh, quite yummy, actually. If you like lemons, you'll think they're great. And um, kidney shaped seed inside, they're quite high in vitamin A and bit of vitamin C. Bonnie Sampy is an Aboriginal elder who lives in Broome. His people have valued the boab nuts for centuries. Some of these people they use it for young, to help the mothers for their newborn baby. Put it in a cup of water, water and mix it up, drink it like a, drink it like a tea. But these days, Bonnie has found another use for the ancient nuts. He turns them into works of art for sale to tourists. I was carbon by blood in the 50s here because there was no job battle around, you know, no job. Extra money, like, you know, for us. When Europeans branched out into the Kimberley, the old Boab tree was put to other uses, like the infamous prison tree near Derby, which some say housed up to 10 prisoners at a time. Or this ancient specimen, which was used to mark the exploratory voyage of His Majesty's cutter, the Mermaid, in 1820. The truth is, nobody really knows how these upside down trees of Africa made it to Australia. 
Some will apply the Gondwanaland theory, when Australia was connected to Africa. Others reckon slave traders dropped off a few nuts, but they're probably barking up the wrong tree. Whichever way you look at it, the Boab is here to stay.